So now, in the previous video, we were left off with restriction enzymes, which we also termed endonucleases. You shouldn't be able to, based off of our previous flowchart, figure out why it's called an endo, that means within nucleases, meaning that it takes out certain things within a certain portion. Endo would refer to the removal of those nucleotides. It cuts nucleotides. That's why it's an endonuclease. We're going to finally utilize all of our knowledge that we established about restriction enzymes by stating that restriction enzymes are ultimately, based off of what HIND3 did, used to create recombinant DNA. Now, this basically is also referred to as sometimes just rDNA, um, not rRNA, I always do that, rDNA, recombinant DNA. This is a crucial DNA technology um, technique. What does this mean? Well, what you're going to do is, based off of what we learned already, you're going to take some foreign DNA. So let's say cut foreign DNA. Okay. Whenever I say cut DNA, you have to al already imagine what we're using to cut it. We're always going to be using restriction enzymes to cut DNA. So we're going to cut foreign DNA and what we refer to as plasmid DNA. Where would plasmid DNA be coming from? Plasmids are only found, are usually always found, in bacteria. So we're going to take a piece of foreign DNA and a piece of bacterial DNA, and we're going to cut them, and this is critical here, with the same exact, same restriction enzyme. Same restriction enzyme. So I'm going to have a tube over here with some foreign DNA like this, okay? And I'm going to add some Hindi 3 here. Okay, so I'm going to add some Hindi 3, a restriction enzyme, into here. And it's going to go find the exact base pairs that we already did in our previous video. And this is going to um, be cut up in the same exact fashion. And then in a separate tube, let's say, let's say this is my um, other tube of bacterial plasmid DNA, and a plasmid is in a circle, we're going to take some DNA and we're going to actually cut it up as well with some Hindi 3. So we're going to write Hindi 3 is going to be added to this tube and we're going to cut up the plasmid DNA at a specific region. So we're doing the same thing to both uh, foreign DNA and plasmid DNA. So now, what is this going to mean? What's going to happen is that the two types of DNA will then be sort of brought back and mixed together. We're going to take both of these and mix them together into one single sort of uh, tube, let's say. So two types of DNA mixed together. Now, what do you think is going to happen if you do this, if you mix these together? What did this create? This is going to create sticky ends. That is the always the end-all be-all goal of restriction enzymes. It creates sticky ends. And those sticky ends will be identical to each other because the same restriction enzyme in the plasmid DNA and the foreign DNA was acting uh, on the respective DNA molecules. Thus, they're going to have the same sticky ends. Thus, what you're going to imagine is that the complementary sticky ends, okay, the complementary sticky ends are going to eventually just match up with each other. They're going to stick onto each other. Will H bond, okay, so we'll say not H ends, but H bond, um, and this will cause significant base pairing. Remember, base pairing is all about, DNA technology is all about base pairing. And what we're going to basically show this as is as the following. We're going to have a foreign piece of DNA that's going to be cut up. Okay, this is a foreign piece of DNA that's going to be cut up, and it's going to look sort of like um, this. It's just going to be a short piece of DNA, because that's what a restriction enzyme does. It cuts up a, f uh, a short piece of DNA. This enzyme over here, the, I mean this bacterial plasmid, is also going to be cut up, and it's basically going to be cut up like this. Okay, let's imagine it's going to be cut up like that. Um, let me do that one more time. It's going to be cut up like this, basically. What do you think? So this is cut up and this is cut up. This has a sticky end, this has a sticky end, this has a sticky end, this has a sticky end. When you mix these two together in a, let's say, tube of sorts, you're going to imagine that they're going to just naturally come and combine onto each other. You're going to imagine that this new restriction enzyme-based recombinant, recombinant DNA will look sort of like this. 
you're going to have a majority plasmid, but it was cut out. There was a piece of it that was cut out. Okay, a piece of it was cut out, that's going to go over here, and another piece was over here. This is going to have two pieces with it as well. It's going to have one long piece and one short piece. The short piece and the bacterial plasmid are actually going to recombine with each other and sort of look like this. See how those sticky ends sort of just came right onto each other? This is now known as a recombinant DNA molecule because of the idea of complementary sticky ends will age bond. They will naturally come onto each other after HINDI3 has acted on both of them and cause a recombinant DNA molecule to form. Now, one last thing that has to happen in order for this to really, really work is that ligase has to come in. Ligase, which we imagine is just glue, the glue of DNA is going to form covalent bonds. Okay, it actually forms just like it does in our DNA uh, replication lecture, forms covalent bonds in the sugar phosphate SP backbone. Okay, so this is a critical, critical enzyme that also has to be added into this uh, concoction that we have over here. And this is going to be done so that we link our DNA fragments. So it links DNA fragments. And which fragments are we talking about here? We're talking about the bacterial plasmid, and we're also talking about the fragment that came from our foreign DNA. Both of those things are going to be linked together via a ligase, via these H bonds, all working together to give us what we call hybridized DNA, meaning that it's a mixture DNA. It's a DNA with two separate hybrids. This is blue for plasmid and red for foreign DNA are co coming onto each other. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this DNA, this hybridized DNA, so we'll say HDNA, hybridized DNA, um, will actually be spliced into what we call a vector. Okay, we're going to take this hybridized DNA and splice it into a vector, and then eventually that will give us a recombinant DNA. Now, this spliced into a vector is actually talked about later on in the lecture, so don't worry about it too much. We're basically going to take this this plasmid DNA that we've just made, this recombined DNA, we're going to multiply it a million times over, we're going to put another restriction enzyme in this situation so that we have a million of these red sections that we really, really want. And we're going to take these red sections and put them into a vector. Later on, we'll see what that really means. Again, please, please watch the YouTube playlist associated with this. It actually so shows this process happening in a cool animation form. Also, look at your textbook images. This is a very visual, heavy lecture that I highly suggest looking at some supplemental external materials besides these flowcharts.